Welcome to the Ideas Podcast on the Demoscopy of Cutaneous Lymphomas. In the next few minutes, we will focus on the main demoscopic clues of these conditions in order to improve our diagnostic ability. Primary cutaneous lymphomas are divided into two main categories, cutaneous T-cell and NK-cell lymphomas and cutaneous B-cell lymphomas. Let's start with cutaneous T-cell and NK-cell lymphomas. As you can see, in this category, we have many variants, but from a demoscopic point of view, we just have two subtypes which have been described more in detail. Mycosis fungoris in its patchy stage and lymphomatoid papillosis. According to the main study on the demoscopy of mycosis fungoris in its patchy stage, we basically have two main demoscopic clues. First, find short linear vessels, which may be seen in more than 90% of cases and correspond to dilated vessels in the dermis. And second, orange yellowish patchy areas which may be appreciated in about 90% of cases and correspond to hemosiderin deposits in the dermis. Moreover, we may have additional demoscopic findings, namely sparse dotted vessels and white scales, but they are less common and less specific compared to the first two features. The same study highlighted another interesting demoscopic finding namely the spermatozoo-like vessels, which are due to the combination of dotted vessels and serpiginous vessels. Even though this feature is less common, it has been found to be quite specific for this condition. So now let's see how the demoscopy may be helpful in distinguishing mycosis fungoris in its patchy stage from clinically similar dermatosis. Dermatitis or eczema is of course one of the most important differential diagnoses and differently from mycosis fungoris in its patchy stage typically displays patchy distributed dotted vessels and yellow scales or crusts which are due to the presence of spongiosis and hyperkeratosis. Psoriasis typically shows a completely different demoscopic picture including diffuse dotted vessels and regular white scales. Finally, small plaque parasoriasis may be distinguished from mycosis fungoris in its patchy stage by highlighting white scaling in the skin furrows. Additionally, in this condition we usually don't have vessels or we may see just sparse vessels. Let's move to lymphomatoid papillosis. It is important to underline that the demoscopic picture of this condition remarkably varies according to the disease stage, and on the basis of the largest study on the topic, the main demoscopic clue in early phases is represented by tertius irregular vessels radiating from the center to the periphery, even though it is not uncommon to come across dotted vessels distributed in a diffuse or sparse way. Additionally, although more uncommonly, diffuse purpuric areas may be the only demoscopic finding seen in early phases. Turning to mature lesions, we may basically have two main demoscopic findings, namely a central white yellow area in hyperkeratotic lesions, or a central yellow-brown-grey crust in necrotic lesions. Additionally, we may also see a colored scaling and peripheral vessels, even though these findings are less common and less specific. A couple of words about the main differential diagnosis of lymphomatoid papillosis. Insect bites may be distinguished from lymphomatoid papillosis by highlighting the central hemorrhagic punctum. Additionally, in this condition we may also see hemorrhagic spots, which differently from lymphomatoid papillosis are typically distributed in a focal way. 
Nodular scabies is easily differentiated from lymphomatoid papillosis by detecting mites and burrows, which are very well visible on demoscopic examination. The situation is different for pleva because it typically displays demoscopic findings which are also seen in lymphomatoid papillosis, including diffuse purpuric carus, peripheral dotted vessels and colorate scaling, but also central yellow-brown-grey crust. So, clinical and anamnestic data and histological examination remain the only aids for the definitive differential diagnosis between pleva and lymphomatoid papillosis. Now let's move to cutaneous B-cell lymphomas. As you can see, we have three main categories, primary cutaneous marginal zone lymphomas, primary cutaneous follicle center cell lymphomas, and primary cutaneous diffuse large B-cell lymphomas. All of these categories have been studied from a dermoscopic point of view. According to the larger study on the topic, we don't have any relevant difference in terms of demoscopic appearance among the three categories of cutaneous B-cell lymphomas, and the two main demoscopic features are represented by salmon colored orange areas, which are visible in about 80% of cases and are due to the presence of a very dense, compact cellular infiltrate in the dermis, and serpentine vessels, which are visible in about 67% of cases. This last finding is less specific compared to the salmon colored orange areas. Additionally, we may have less common and less specific features including other vessels, scales, and ulceration. Interestingly, two recent case series have highlighted that cutaneous B-cell lymphomas may display further peculiar demoscopic findings, including white areas and white circles, which correspond to the presence of dermal fibrosis. Of course, dermoscopy may be useful in differentiating cutaneous B-cell lymphomas from other neoplastic lesions because they typically display other peculiar findings and usually do not show salmon colored orange areas. However, there are other differential diagnoses that need to be addressed, namely granulomatous diseases and B-cell pseudolymphomas. Unfortunately, dermoscopy is not helpful in differentiating cutaneous B-cell lymphomas from these conditions because they typically display the same dermoscopic findings as cutaneous B-cell lymphomas, namely salmon colored or orange areas and serpiginous vessels. So, histological examination remains the only aid in the final differential diagnosis. That's the end of the podcast. I just would like to remember you that there is an ongoing study with International Demoscopy Society on the Moscovy primary cutaneous lymphomas, so please send us your cases. You will find more details on the study on the EDS website. Thank you very much for watching this video. And I hope you enjoyed it and learned something interesting for your daily clinical practice.